hey, if you're outside, come inside. If you're inside, stand up. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we come to you tonight. We thank you and praise you for your love, your mercy, your grace, your peace. Lord God, we thank you that no matter where we go or what we've done, you have always been waiting there to welcome us with your love, your mercy, and your forgiveness. So Lord, tonight we just open ourselves up to you and say thank you for your
Great are you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may sit down if you can. If not, it's okay. Be back up in a minute. Scripture reading will come from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 30 through 34. Luke 10, 30 through 34. Man. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an end and took care of him. God, we thank you for your holy word. Amen. Who was here Sunday night? Amen. Amen. Just like that Samaritan, we took care of people as well. We helped heal the wounded. We helped deliver amen we help set people free by the power of the most high God God used us in a mighty way to do something great and to do something that was needed take that out to the streets take what you saw here out to the highways and byways because that's the real mission field amen we got to learn to serve one another. That's what we're here for. Now, if you want to see a move of God, allow God to move through you so other people can get breakthroughs. Because there were people that spoke into your life, that prayed with you, and believed with you. And that's how you got your breakthrough as well. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good word. Go ahead and give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. Now stand to your feet one more time. It's offering time. Hallelujah. We thank God for his presence. We thank God for moving. He's going to continue moving. And he's going to do as much as you allow him to do. Amen. So let's get into this atmosphere of praise and worship. And watch how God pours into us. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for allowing us to get here safely. Lord, we pray for each other. We're believing for each other. We're asking, Lord God, that you bless every seed that's sown into this house. We're praying miracles, signs, and wonders to take place. Show us your glory, your power, and love. For us, in Jesus' name we pray, and everyone say, amen, amen. If you look on our screens, there's several ways that you can bless the kingdom of God, you can text give FLCC to 833-867-6600. Go to flcconline.com and hit the giving tab. And if you have our church app, we urge you to use that as well. Amen. You may come from this side first. We thank you for your giving. Amen.
Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. Has he done anything that's worthy for you to exalt him and lift him up tonight? Come on. Listen, we got to cry out. We got to praise him. If we don't, then the Bible says the rocks will cry out for us. I don't know about you, but I'm going to give God the praise that he's worthy of out of my own mouth. I'm not going to let somebody else or something else praise him when it's my turn. So look at your neighbor and say, it's my turn to praise him. I'm going to praise him tonight. Come on, let's lift him. I That's right, that's how we do it. We magnify you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just raise your hands in here and just worship our Lord. Just welcome him to come. Just, just worship him. Hallelujah. Lord, we know that without your spirit, we can do nothing. But through you, Lord, the impossible can be done. Lord, I thank you for all the wonderful testimonies that we've already heard about what you did for people Sunday night just thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you that every miracle is another testimony that you are still God every deliverance is another testimony that you are still on the throne that there is no other name that's greater than your name so we love you we praise you Lord that you would use us that you would use us little old us to bring about big things in the kingdom of God. And we bless your holy name. Come on, somebody bless the Lord. Let's just worship him. Let's sing this song. Let's... I feel. Come on, say, I feel. Well, I feel a warm wind blowing. And it's melting. All the sadness off of my soul. Sing with your heart tonight. Come on. Sweet cherry blossoms and the roaring of the gladness into my soul in winter. I believe you in springtime. I see. for hope we've received hope in jesus <laughs> amen 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 now i walk now i walk through the valley of the shadow how many of you knows this how many been tested like silver and gold lord your faith has taught me to cherish that this like affliction come on is not my whole in winter I believe you in springtime I see you it's so good to be with you my hope has come so Lord you make all things new your love is my breakthrough now I see how they now I'm not, now I'm not, come on. 
your hands. Put your hands together. Give God a praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph tonight because he has defeated our enemies on the cross. Amen. 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 High five three people tonight. Tell them say my hope is here because my hope is Jesus. Amen. God bless you tonight. Let's give it up for our worship team folks. God bless them. God bless them. We appreciate them. Also, also fuel students, you may be dismissed. Fuel students, you may be dismissed. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm pumped up. I'm ready for a Sunday. I am psyched out about Sunday, y'all. We're celebrating 15 years of ministry this Sunday. Of God's wonderful faithfulness. Not only are we going to be in the presence of God. Not only are we going to hear the word of God. Not only are we going to hear amazing worship. But it's going to be. We get to eat like Baptists. Is that what you said? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. We are not eating like Baptists Sunday. We are not eating like Baptists. There will not be a casserole here. Not a one. We're going to be eating good Sunday. We're going to eat steak and chicken and fixings. It's going to be a blessing. That's going to be after service. And we don't, we don't even charge. It's free. It'll be the best steak or chicken you ever ate in your life. Who was it? I remember the first time. Who was it? Colby. It Colby. Is Colby here? Where's he at? Is he at home? He's test driving that new car, isn't he? I know where he's at. I'm calling him out on the live stream. Just because you got a new car don't mean you can't come to church. Amen. <laughs> he came up to his first time he was, he was here for an a anniversary service. And he said, I heard you guys announcing y'all were going to have steak at the church. I wasn't looking forward to it. He said, that was going to be the, I knew it. It was going to be the roughest toughest piece of steak that they ever made. I just knew it. I knew I was going to be chewing on leather. He said, but I have to say, this is the best steak I've ever had in my life. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that good steak. Don't be, we got to give thanks for the Lord for all that he's given us. Amen. Including the nice, wonderful meals that we receive. Amen. So, but not only that, we're going to be back to the 80s style. So you come in here and we're going to be in 1985 when you walk up in here. And so I'm curious, I'm, I'm ready to see what you guys come up with on your outfits. Cause I know most of y'all lived in the eighties and y'all shut up. This jacket was not from the eighties cause I, I could not wear what I wore in the eighties. It would have been too small. I couldn't wear it. Uh, I ordered this off of, uh, I think, no, I got this at H&M just like last year. Thank you very much. All right. We're diving back in tonight to uh, the book of James. We've been studying the book of James for a good while now. 
and we are uh, we're just going line by line. We're not in a hurry. So if you if you like to jump in the Bible and say, "Let me get as much as I can, as fast as I can," that ain't our style. We like to dig, 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 find truths, get nuggets, get it all that we can while we're in there, because we believe there's all kind of good stuff in the Word of God that we can get out of it tonight. If you got your Bibles, turn to the book of James, chapter 2. James, chapter 2. Father, bless us tonight. Lord, I pray that you prepare the hearts of the people, God, to receive your word. God, because the word tells us, Lord, that some falls on good ground, some falls on stony ground, some falls on thorny ground, and some don't even make it, and the, the birds come and eat it up, God. Let our ground be good ground tonight to receive the seeds from the word, to produce a harvest, Lord, not just for ourselves, but for all those we come in contact with, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And if you agree, say amen. 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 We are going to jump into a section of James. Now, James, if you just go read the book of James, it's like it's almost like you feel like James had like, ADD or something like he just jumps from topic to topic to topic to topic in very short amount of spans but I believe that he is just really just anything that he's been feeling he just drops in this book so this is the section we're getting ready to get into and I'm actually I'm pretty pumped about this myself uh, this is the one where it talks about faith without works this is the subject so this is what we're going to talk about faith without works is there a thing called faith without works can you have faith without works? Can you, can you, can you be a faithful person but have no, no action after it? Now, 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 there's a lot of confusion sometimes in the Bible, not in the Bible, but in the interpretation of the Bible, depending on what church you go to or who your pastor is or how they interpret it. But I can tell you right now, there is no confusion with the Bible itself because the Bible says that we are saved, Right? By grace, through faith, and not of works, lest any man should boast. That, that it's not the works that saves us, it's the grace of God that saves us. And we all come in agreement with that tonight, right? You can't do any work in your life that is, makes you worthy somehow of God's grace. You can't do that. It's not possible, but God's grace is not based off of your efforts. It's based off of Jesus' efforts. I want you to know that somebody had to work in order to get, get you grace. Somebody had to pay a price to get you grace. Somebody had to do something in order to deliver grace to your front door, and that is Jesus Christ. That's why we pray in Jesus' name. That's why the name of Jesus makes demons flee. That's why the name of Jesus is so precious, and there's no other name that we're saved by except for that name, the powerful name of Jesus. Does anybody know the name Jesus tonight? Do you love the name Jesus tonight? That's because he's the only one that did that for us. The difference between Christianity and every other religion is every other religion has a method of works to get to God or to try to have a relationship with God. If you'll pray so many times, if you'll face a certain direction while you pray, uh, if you'll quote certain uh, things while you do it, if you get your energy lined up with the right chakras of the universe and you do this consistently, then then you will whatever, whatever it is. But 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 the fact of the matter is there's nothing that you could do to actually get to God. You can't do anything and say, I'm going to do this enough until I get to God. That's religion. Religion is based off of your actions trying to make you good or get you right. And it doesn't work. But after God does come to you, after God does rescue you, and after he does save you, the answer to the question next is what do we do with the gift of God that he's given us? Ain't a lot of people happy about that tonight. About four people clapped and the rest of y'all stared at me, but I ain't scared of you. I'll just keep right on preaching. What do we do with the grace of God that's been given to us? Because I am a full, I'm full 100% believer in that God didn't save me to sit down and do nothing. 
God didn't heal me so I could sit down and say, I got my healing. I guess I'm good to go. God didn't deliver me so I could just say, well, I guess I'm delivered. Hallelujah. I guess it's good for me. The rest of y'all, peace out. You're on your own. No, he did something in my life so I could turn around and be a blessing in somebody else's life. He did something in my heart so I could turn around and help somebody else. He brought me out of that darkness so I could see the darkness and help somebody else come out of that darkness. God, don't waste his blessings on you so you do nothing come on somebody God's a good investment God knows how to make good investments and he invested everything he had into you he said I got it all to pay for I got it all to pay for and I'll pay the price for you I'll bankrupt everything I got in order to gain you and it's such a powerful gift we should the Bible says that when he had his supper and nobody came. He said, go out and compel them to come. Go out to the highways and the hedges. These seats are valuable. These, somebody look and say, these seats are valuable. The seats that sit around the table of God are valuable. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. They are so valuable. You know what? You might not be able to see the value, or maybe your neighbor might not be able to see the value, or your family might not see. See, some of you are here tonight, and your family thinks you're a nut job because you come to church on a Wednesday night. They think you have lost your mind, and you're some kind of religious fanatic. But what they don't understand is that you get a seat at the table of the master, and you know how valuable that table is and that seat really is what other people shun we receive with gladness what the Pharisees and Sadducees rejected and the Jews rejected when the Gentiles got a hold of the message we said we'll receive Jesus we'll give our life to Jesus we'll preach the gospel to Jesus thank you God that we're the wild olive branch that's been grafted in Woo, I feel like preaching tonight. How many people have wasted their lives trying to find value in the world when the only value that was real was the value that God had, that the value he put in his people, the value he put into his church. That's why he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. You don't get anointed by being a part of the Elk Lodge. You don't get anointed by being a part of the PTA. You run devils out by being a part of the church. Amen. Ain't no place I'd rather be tonight. You wouldn't catch me dead over there at the smoking barrel. They ain't got nothing for me. I don't care what bottle it comes in or how nicely wrapped them cigars are. You can keep them, honey, because I don't need them. I don't want them. What I get from God is far more valuable. So he said, go out in the hedges and the highways and compel them. Come on, 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 come, come sit with me. Come be with me. Come dwell with me. Thank you, brother. Come to the house of God. Come. I want you to be here. Compel them. Some of you are really good at that too. Trying to get people, show people what God is doing in your life. Because there is really no faith if you can't show it. There is no closet Christian. Amen. Listen, if the queers can come out of the closet, then the Christian people should come out of the closet and come out all the way. And what's the one? What's the ones that are really fired up about being gay? They call them flamers, don't they? They are gay and they're proud. And they're like, honey, child. We should come out the closet and we should come out the closet all the way. All the way. I said all the way. Keeping my faith a secret. My God, we got the greatest thing ever. You know what? You can get money, you'll die with that. You can get fame, guess what? People forget you, you'll die and they'll forget you. Let me tell you something. When you have eternal life through Jesus Christ, you have a gift that is so valuable that, let me tell you, let me tell you, that is the gift that keeps on giving. Who is it on the Christmas vacation? Eddie, cousin Eddie. 
He thought he's going to get his big bonus. He's getting ready to put a pool in with his family. I didn't put the deposit in on the pool. He's dreaming in the backyard looking at his pool. It's not there, but he can see it. It's already there. And instead of getting his bonus, he gets enrolled to the Jelly of the Month Club. He gets a new sample of a new jelly every month. Cousin Eddie comes up and says, well, it's the gift that keeps on giving every month. You know what? The gift of Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. The more I serve him, the more he gives. The more he blesses me, the more I get filled up. Uh, he just blesses and keeps on and on and on. How many of you remember the song? It gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Every day it gets sweeter with Jesus. Now the world gets madder and madder and uglier and uglier, but Jesus gets better and better. That's why we hold on to Jesus. So let's look at this faith works because they are not diametrically opposed of each other. And you can't have one without the other. It's imbalanced. So let's look at it. Verse, where are we at? Verse 14. It says, what does it profit my brothers? Though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? This is the question. This is the million dollar question. Can he say he have faith and have not works? Well, I can tell you right now, there's a lot of people that says they have faith, but I haven't seen any evidence of that faith yet. A lot of times there's a big difference in what people say they are and who they really are. I don't ever want to say I'm something if I'm not really something. That, may, that means you're a liar. That means your, your daddy's Satan. Because he's the father of all lies. So if you say something, say I'm this and you're not, you're a liar and you're a hypocrite. Because your actions do not complete what you say. And words are powerful, mind you. I mean, I wouldn't go around telling people I'm an astronaut. I've never been in space. I never flew on a spaceship at all, not one time. It makes no sense for me to go around and tell people that I'm an astronaut. But you have people go around and tell people they are Christians all day long. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And you know what? There is no evidence whatsoever in their life to back up that statement. I believe this is what the Bible's talking about. I believe people can say they are, but I'm telling you, you can't get away with that with God. There's a lot of people that say they're Christians and, and, and you know, I'll believe them. Oh, okay, well, I mean, you look like you're a Christian. But I'm going to tell you, you can't fool God. God's the one that keeps the score and he keeps the records. He knows. He knows the difference. He knows where you really are. And let me tell you something. You can't fool him. You can fool people your whole life, but you cannot fool God. And that's why I don't understand people. People act like God don't pay attention to us and he don't know what we do. He don't know who we are. It's like we're going to get away with something. We don't get away with anything. So guess what? You know what? Just be who God has made you to be and just, just roll with that. Just don't be something that you're not supposed to be. All right, so let's keep moving. It says, verse 15 says, If a brother or sister be naked or destitute of food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace and be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful of the body, what does it profit them? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. The, the example that he gives is if somebody comes hungry and you, and you pull out one of these cars and you say, in the name of the Lord, be filled with food. And you don't give them any food. You're a crackpot. That's what you are. You're crazy. I, you know what? I'm cold. I, I need a shirt. I need a jacket. Can you, can you help me? I, you know, I've got faith to believe that God's going to help you and take care of you. Be clothed. <sighs> like you move your hand like a Jedi. Just <sighs> No, that's not how this works. But how many people do this? How many people do this? How many people say, yeah, I'll pray for you. And they don't ever think to pray for you, not one time, not even the, the, in the next 10 seconds, they forget to even think about you. But I'll pray for you. 
You know, the Holy Spirit convicted me of that several years ago. And I started praying for that person right then. If I said, I'll pray for them, I'm going to pray for you right then. If I type it in online, if I type, I'm praying for you, I say, Lord, I'm going to stop and I'm praying for this person right here for this need. I ask you to move on their behalf right now. I don't have to pray a hundred thousand word prayer. I'm going to seek God. I'm going to make a request to him and I'm going to say, amen. But at least I ain't a liar. At least I ain't false representing who I say that I am because that doesn't bring glory to God at all. If you were hungry and you were naked, by God, we'd rush to get you some clothes on or something in you. Amen. Wouldn't you? If you saw somebody running down the street naked as a jaybird and you got clothes in your trunk, would you not be like, please put these on? Just put them on. Well, I don't know if they're in my size. Put them on. <laughs> Instead of sitting there saying, you know what? Lord bless them. I just prayed, Lord, 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 help them. Lord bless them. I think God wants us to do stuff more than we say stuff. And I believe that God would actually just want us to just do stuff even without saying it. Just do it. Just be who God's called you to be instead of talking about who God's called you to be. I, I, people that tell me who they are all the time scare me to death. Walk around, I'm anointed. You know I'm anointed. You know God's called me. You know I'm a prophet of the Lord. You know I'm a prophet of the Lord, of the Lord, of the Lord. You don't have to tell me a hundred times. If you're a prophet of the Lord, I guarantee you, you're going to do prophet stuff. Amen? That's like calling yourself a car mechanic and you'll never fix no cars. I'm a mechanic. I'm a mechanic. I'm a mechanic. Fix my brakes. Sorry, I don't do that. you much of a mechanic. Right? People that just say stuff all the time and they never do anything, those are the ones I'm afraid of. If I look around and see you doing stuff, I'm like, mm-hmm, God bless them. Mm-hmm, God's going to use them. I know, I know I'm going to pray an extra blessing on them. People walk around, talk about what they do all the time. Those are the ones I'm afraid of. Not literally afraid of like I ain't scared of them if I saw them in an alley. They scare me in the sense that they are doing something that is endangering themselves. I talk, 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 but I never do anything. I tell you right now, it's serious. I take it serious. I don't ever get up in this pulpit and say, we're going to do this. We're going to do this and then not do it. We put our money where our mouth is. If you do that all the time, people are like, man, they just, they talk a good talk. They don't do anything. I mean it. We mean business. We'll do what we say we're going to do because that matters. Look at me. That matter In 2022, it matters. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Don't say you're going to do something if you have no intentions on doing it. Yeah, I'll meet you here at 5 o'clock. We're going to meet. We're going to go and do this work. We're going to go and help this person. And boom, boom, boom. They, never, they don't show up. It happens. It happens all the time. People aren't. Uh, I grew up. You're a man of your word. A man's word is a man's bond. That's how I grew. That's how it, I, I was taught. You don't tell somebody you're going to do something if you're not going to do it. Your word used to have value. It used to mean something to people. They used to handshake deals, business deals, million dollar deals on a handshake because men could be trusted. Not anymore. You better get it in writing, Jack, because that'll change in a skinny minute. So here we go. It says, even so faith, if it has not works, is, is dead, being alone. Say faith alone. You don't ever want your faith to be by itself. You want something to back it up. You want something to come with it. Verse 18, it says, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Oh, so now we got a whole nother project here. Now you got one guy on this side that says, look at my faith. And this guy over here says, look at my works. That's a whole nother element to this thing, right? So, so, so what's the deal with that? He says, show me your faith without works and I'll show you uh, faith, my faith by my works. You show me your faith without works and I'll show you my faith by my works. If I show up to your house and I'm selling you something, and I pull out this book and I say, I've done this 
182,000 times on 182,000 houses. Look, here's my receipts. Here's the pictures. I know how to do this. I'm not just talking my talk. I've got 14 numbers of references you can call right now that will verify my work, that will say, you know what? My work will speak for itself. I don't just show up and sell you something that I can't deliver because there's a lot of that going on these days. I show up and I'll show you what I've done and my works will speak for itself. In other words, instead of telling you what I'm going to do and then trying to show up to do it I'm just going to do what I do and let the work speak for itself I'm going to be who God's called me to be and then everything else will be fine because everything else will line up you don't have to tell anybody you're a Christian You know how they'll know when they start telling the dirty joke in the break room? That's when you exit. I'm out, guys. Oh, oh, Pastor Shannon, why are you all up in my grits like that? Because it's real. Instead of over there gossiping or complaining about the boss all day and all night and all day and you don't ever do nothing about it. Hey, if you don't like your boss, quit. Go somewhere. Bye. Find another job. They hiring McDonald's $28 an hour. I never heard nothing like it in my life. <clears throat> you can flip burgers for $28 an hour. My God. It's crazy. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Right? Say, no, guys, I can't do that. You know what? I'm, gonna, I'm taking the rest of my break, and I'm going to spend it with JC and the boys. We're going to find out what they're up to today. Go read my Bible. You know what? You ain't got to walk around and tell, you, tell them who you are at that point. Oh, 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 oh. We're going to pray over this food, guys. Because we give thanks to God above for all the blessings that come our, into our life. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, you see people spitting half-eaten sandwiches out. Oh, oops, sorry. Forgot, 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 forgot. Why? Just be about it. And what I'm saying, when you are the person with the faith, that's what makes the difference. Not saying that you have faith, but just being faithful. Being the person that God wants you to be. That's where the real action is. Verse, eight, uh, verse 19, it says this. It says, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. He's saying, you, you sit here and say, I believe in God. How many people you know sit there and say, I believe in God? Drunk as Cooter Brown. I believe in God. I believe in God. And I just drank a fifth of liquor. I used to, everywhere I went, I've, I worked in all kinds of corporate jobs and companies. and <clears throat> I was always a Christian. Half the time I was a pastor while I was working and doing all this stuff. I'm going to tell you what. People didn't ever want to talk about God. Until they were drunk. I'd have to go to these daggum meetings. These retreats. Managers meetings. We'd go to some hotel. Stay in the hotel. Have the meeting. And to go. You had to go out with every, all the other managers. It was man. I never understood that. You going to make me go to a restaurant with all you drunks? I don't want to be around you. Right? Anybody ever had to do that? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I'm going to tell you what, I'm sitting around, I'm drinking my Coke, and all these drunks around, they asking me questions about God. You know, deep down inside, I just really love the Lord. I just really, I just, I just want to do right. <laughs> I just really, I really got faith in God. And, you know, I see you all the time at work, and, you know, I just really respect you, man. And, but I, I, I know I need, and my wife tells me all the time, and I just know I need to. Here's, here's a napkin. Wipe them tears up, son. <laughs> we'll talk about it on Monday if you want to talk about it sober. <clears throat> he says, listen, people talk a good talk. And you single people out here? <laughs> Whoa. Be careful because well, I'm a Christian. I had a guy tell me one time, he goes on Christian sites to date Christian women because they're desperate.
<laughs> I'm not lying to you. It's exactly what he said. I do it on purpose because they are desperate women. And they're believing that I'm the right one. He wasn't the right one. But he said the right things. He acted the right part. He said the right words. Come on, somebody. Y'all act like I'm crazy up here. I'm telling the truth. Y'all just mad. Y'all single people mad at me now. Because y'all done met three of them online and y'all know it. The Lord done said, see, I told you. <laughs> that man wasn't no more Christian. <laughs> so, be, care be careful with people that say, I'm a Christian. Or they use words, yeah, like, I believe in God. The devil believes in God. The devil believes in God. That ain't saying much. I believe in God. <laughs> well, good. You're at the same level as Lucifer. Congratulations. <laughs> show, me, show me something real, man. Do you have a real prayer life? Are you really a, a man or a woman of God? Show me something. Right? Don't tell me something. Show me something. And that's really what it's all about, isn't it? You don't want your wife or your husband to tell you they love you. You want them to show you. Right? Words are good. Words are great. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. But it's really the actions behind that follow those words that really make it something, right? It's all about actions. Christians should be all about actions. But how did it break down? I often think about this. How did it break down from the disciples on? You got men that walked with God. With Jesus in, incarnate, God in the flesh, <clears throat> how did we get so jacked up from there? It's when we stopped seeking God and everything else started to distract and get our focus off what the truth is. This isn't a modern day church issue. This was an issue back then. Too many gods, too many flashing lights, too many this, too many that, too many distractions. <clears throat> when you're sold out to Jesus, your faith is everything to you. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters and nothing else is more important to you. It's more important to you than making overtime. It's more important to you than going to certain functions that you feel obligated to go to, but you, your heart's not in it because you'd rather be somewhere else. You'd rather follow God. You, I had somebody come to me recently. They said, I have a funeral with my family, but I have an opportunity to preach the same time. They wanted me to tell them what to do. I said, what do you want to do? I want to go preach. Then go preach. Because I'm going to hurt some feelings in here right now. And you're going to go home crying. Talking about Pastor Shannon so mean. But I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. When they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, can we go take care of the dead people? He said, let the dead bury the dead. I got ministry for you. I got ministry. I got plans. And you got to go where your faith has called you to go. They got people that will take care of the body. They'll take care of the people. They'll take care of the arrangements for the right amount of money. People think that's a ministry. For profit ministry. <laughs> yeah. Go to the funeral home. See how much you can get on your good looks. <laughs> Not very far. Right? But they'll take care of that. You might have something better to do. <clears throat> but you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to be this. You know what? If it's good enough for Jesus, I, I mean, your faith should be more important than anything else. Living that out should be more important than anything else in your life. It should convict you every time there's a choice and you don't choose God. It should cause you to have to go back in and inspect your own life every single time. Listen, I know there's some stuff you might wrestle with. Raise your hand and say, I wrestle with stuff. I wrestle with stuff. Let everybody know. Everybody's got something they fight, battle, wrestle, deal with. But I'm going to tell you right now, there is some things that you shouldn't ever have to wrestle with. Should I pick Jesus or not? Absolutely. I'm picking him. I ain't wrestling with it. Am I going to the house of God? You know what? If I want him to come to my house, I'm going to his house. There ain't nothing. I know who I believe and you can't talk me out of it. 
I love, I love the people that get all fired up talking about, I'll give my life for the Lord Jesus Christ. You won't even give up your Sunday for the Lord Jesus Christ. You won't even go to his house for the Lord Jesus Christ. You tell me you're going to die for him? Uh, sorry, Charlie. That dog don't hunt. I'm going to give my life. I'll be a martyr for the Lord. You won't even go to prayer meeting for the Lord. Amen. I'm going to say this. <clears throat> if you really want something, you'll get it. If you really want something, you'll go for it. Won't nobody talk to you. If you really want a boat, some of you men in here, I want a boat. Everybody and their cousin tell you, don't buy the boat. It stands for bust out another thousand. It's a money pit. Don't buy the boat. I want the boat because I want the bass. That's what I do. I need the boat. You tell them every day, don't buy that boat. Don't buy. I'm getting me a boat by God. I'm a man. I need a truck and a boat. They'll move heaven and earth to get a truck and a boat, won't they? Come on, somebody. You women ain't no different. If it says Gucci on it, and uh, oh, I'm getting me that back, sweetheart. Oh, if I got to wait till it goes on sale, you're going to get it. You know. Some of you ain't into Gucci. Some of you into other stuff. And if you really want it, you'll go after it. It is in you. I, I used to invite people to come to church. Sounds funny, don't it? I used to. I used to invite people to come to church. <laughs> what I mean to say is I used to tell people, hey, I pastor a church in Mount Holly or blah, blah, blah. Will you come? Will you come to church? And most of the people look at me and lie straight to my face and say, I'll be there Sunday. I don't even want them to tell me. I don't even want you to tell me you're coming now. I don't even want you to tell me. Just don't even tell me. Just show up and I'll see you. And I'll say, you're a person uh, that is of your words. You're, you're, wow, it's amazing that you're here. Don't lie to me. I got tired of being disappointed. They said they'd be here. They said they'd be here. And they're not here. So what, what does that tell me? You know what? Something is way more important than what they promised. How many people are disappointed by something like that? You were promised to raise. A year later, they still ain't showed up. An excuse. HR, HR lost the paperwork. Sorry. We don't, we don't know what to do. Uh, I, I sent in the, the, the request. I sent in the form. I emailed it. It must have went to the spam folder. I don't know. It's disappointing when people promise you stuff and it never comes. How do you think God feels? How do you think the Lord feels when somebody says, Lord, I'll do this for you. Lord, I'll show up. God, I'll be the one. God, you, we're sitting here singing on a, on, 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 a, on a Wednesday night or a Sunday, and we're worshiping. We're, and we're singing songs like, like, God, I surrender all. I surrender all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all and get outside, and we won't even surrender our temper. We, don't, we won't even surrender uh, uh, our anger. We won't surrender anything because it has a control over us. Our words and our actions cannot be imbalanced. I got two words for you. The first one, faith without works, this is what I would call incomplete faith. If you're taking notes, write that down. Incomplete faith. Because there should be something to come after your faith. <clears throat> what if the disciples, when the Jesus showed up and said, hey, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. No, I just want the salvation stuff, Jesus. No, I'm, I'm calling you to be my disciples. That means you got to follow me. Ah, ah, ah. No, I don't want to follow. I just want to do my thing. But when I need you, I'll call on you. He wouldn't have a very good team of disciples, would he? He told them and all the people following him, go. You got to go. Can't wait for somebody else to go. God's called you to do it. So are you going to have incomplete faith or the other side works? If we know that faith without works is dead, 
Dead things stink and you bury them. Does your faith stink? Or on the other side, do you, look, do you have works? And are you working and working and working? And you know what? Even in a lot of good churches, there's a lot of people that are still trying to work their way into grace and salvation. So it's either two things that are extreme, either incomplete faith or empty works. That's it. That's really what he's saying. If you have, say you have faith, then prove it. But if you, if you, if you show works, then your heart's got to be in it too. You see, because if I show up and I look at somebody and say, I'm going to feed you a meal. But I don't have the love of Christ in me. Then I'm just sharing food with somebody. That means my salvation is in vain because I'm doing the actions. But my heart doesn't know him. That's why Matthew 7 says, many shall say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not feed and do miracles and see wonders and great things in your name? We did it in your name. And he's like, yeah, you use my name and my name has authority. And my name works, but I don't even know you. It's like when people name drop. Oh, yeah, I know so-and-so. Oh, really? No, they don't really know. Him. They bumped into him at a restaurant one time and their shoulders touched each other. That was it. Oh, Brad could be like, man, ah. I saw Cam Newton. Most people would be like, and? What does that mean? He took us in the locker room and we saw Cam Newton's gloves. Remember that? I probably shouldn't have said that. It's probably a restricted area he took us in on that tour. He wasn't supposed to take us that area. He said, look, here's this drawer. We pulled up and it's a Cam Newton. It was his gloves. Almost got me a pair. <laughs> Thanks, Cam. Appreciate that, bud. They'd search me on the way out, and I'd get caught and get arrested for stealing at the Panther Stadium. It ain't worth it, is it? You can't be incomplete. Does that make sense? James is saying you can't be incomplete. Don't have one without the other. Saying you have faith, but there's nothing that happens is, is empty. It's like, it's like being a gardener without a garden. A race car driver without a race car. A pastor without any evident works or a Krispy Kreme with no donuts inside. <laughs> You're like, tear the building down. It don't matter. There's no donuts here. It doesn't matter. That's what it's like. There's nothing. There's no substance. Let me tell you something. God will hold us to that standard. If we say it, we better produce it. We better produce it. And if we're producing, make sure our heart's in it. Everybody stand with me as I read this last little section. <clears throat> he says this over and over again. Over and over again. Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Who's he, think, who's he talking about? I, I bet you he's probably talking about them religious people. The religious people that said, I, I went to church. You know, I walked in the doors of the church. I checked the box. You know, I, I, I got my scripture on my, on my uh, text message. And I, I read it every day. That check, that's a check, right? Uh, we're, or, or, so we're into checking boxes now. We're going to put God in a box saying, this is it. I did my duty. I'm done. What if the Holy Spirit wants to do something fresh and new and different in you today than what he did yesterday, but we're not open to it. He's saying, don't go away from me. Don't get away from my presence. Don't get away from my spirit. Don't get away from me. Listen, don't say you are of me if you're not, but don't go and do stuff in my name if you don't want me to be in the middle of it what he's saying Ephesians 2 10 and I'm done for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them 
There are works that God has for you. There's a job and an assignment and a race to run that's got your name on it. And only you can do it. Only you can take that and make that happen. And God wants you to fulfill your purpose and your calling. That's what he desires for you. He don't want you to be a lazy bum Christian. In name only. I'm telling you, the other day the Lord hit me like a ton of bricks. He said the word Christian, the word Christian. He said the reason why, the reason why people can front that name so much is because there's no power in the name Christian. He said there's power in the name of Jesus. He said people can say that name Christian. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and nothing happens. But you notice they won't say I'm a follower of Jesus unless it is legit. I'm a disciple. That's why witches and warlocks can go inside churches and say, I'm a good Christian. Look at me. I'm a good Christian. And lie the whole time. Mm. It's in Jesus. The next time somebody asks you, what do you believe and what's your faith? Don't say Christian. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't use it. Because I think that word is just, I think it's watered down now. They just used it and used it and used it. And it has no meaning anymore, right? Just say, I'm a disciple of Jesus. <laughs> Will you do that? Let's start doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start doing that too. I'm, I'm a disciple of Jesus. I'm a follower of Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us. You have blessed our hands to do the work of the kingdom of God. How can we go into all the world and preach the gospel if we're not willing to do works for you? How in the world can the Bible tell us signs and wonders shall follow them that believe? If we don't put our hand to anything to see signs and wonders. If we don't pray for anybody to get healed. If we don't lay hands on the sick. If we don't cast the demons out. How can we see signs and wonders? It's because you do want us to work, God. You want the grace and the salvation on the inside of us, the change, the new creature, to cause us to stop working for the devil and to start working for you. You don't want us to stop working. You want us to change bosses. And we ask God that you would anoint us. Raise your hand if you want to receive that anointing, that, that increased anointing for you in your life. Lord, anoint your people, God. We ask for an increased anointing so we can accomplish what you desire for us to do, God. It ain't about our will, it's about yours. And we know faith without works is dead, so sign us up for works and we'll love you all the way through it, God, but we will not lose sight of you while we do. And we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. 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 Give the Lord a praise in here one good time. Do we have any first-time guests in the house? Raise your hand, say I'm a first-time guest. One right here. Two, three. Hey, Amen. Let's give them a big finish line. God bless you tonight. We appreciate y'all being here with us. Hey, Amen. Thank y'all so much for taking the time to be here on our refuel night. Hey, Amen. First time you come, you're a guest. Second time you come, you're family. Uh, if you would, you can go through the double doors, turn left to it, go to our welcome center. If you fill out a connection card, you get a free gift just for being a first time guest here. We think that's worth something. All right. Uh, let's go through some events real fast. Don't forget our prayer nights Monday, every Monday at six, uh, stronger Bible study group meets here at 7 PM. Get plugged into those ministries. Y'all fuel students. That's middle and high school meet here every Wednesday night for their for their meeting. Finish line ladies, you all are meeting and have a monthly meeting this Friday at 6.30 right here at finish line. And you guys are doing a Bible study uh, of the book of Philippians. So get here this Friday at 6.30. Uh, this Sunday, we're having our 15 year anniversary celebration back to the 80s theme. It's going to be a great time, I promise you. And I promise you we'll eat good in the word and we'll eat good afterwards too. All right. And not only that, we got a dunk booth. We're going to have different pastors in there. So we're raising money. You pay money, you get some balls, you dunk them, you throw at them. And, uh, 
all to raise money for the youth. All right. That's what we're trying to do. So we also got a big water slide coming. It's just going to be a big day. Don't plan on running out of here. Bring a change of clothes with you and let's, and let's celebrate 15 years. Uh, we have our VBS event coming up at the end of this month. It's under the big top, our one day VBS, July 30th. Get your kids signed up today, flcconline.com. You can go and register right now on our website. Uh, fuel students, you guys have a retreat coming up September 2nd. Please see Pastor Mark or Pastor Ben for that. Um, also, we want to announce tonight that we have, uh, we've got the date for the women's retreat. The, you women are going on a retreat and it's going to be September 15th through the 17th and it's $140 per person, $50 non-refundable deposit due upon signing up. You ladies have been asking and asking and asking, and we finally got them to uh, settle on that date for us, and you guys are going to have a great time. So sign up, and you will be blessed at the women's retreat this year, I promise. All right. Uh, what else? Car wash. Car show. Car show. We already had the car wash. Car show, 9 to 2. That's coming up on the 13th of August. Um, if, if they want to... Sign up. Who, who do they contact for all this? Okay, so say, see the big bearded guy in the back, or uh, Justin, or uh, Pastor Ben. One of the two. Either, if you want to participate, get your car in. Car show, all of us to raise money. We're trying to help these young people, all right? Amen. Or if you don't like car shows, just give us $20. Amen. Just bless. Just, just, just go up and say, here, I want to be a blessing to the young people. Amen. Listen, the world will spend an infinite amount of money on their kids to deceive them and do all kind of stuff. In the kingdom, we can spend some money on our kids. We can do it. And last but not least, um, volunteer of the month is our very own Pastor Bobby Ray Biddle. Wave at the people. <laughs> He really is fun. Don't look at his face. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Let's pray. Let's pray. God, I thank you for all these wonderful people. Lord, I ask God that you would pour into them, give them all the grace, all the power and anointing they need to overcome every battle in their life. And we thank you, Father, that we're not leaving your presence. We're just leaving this place. But we thank you for meeting us here tonight. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. We hope to see you this weekend. Keep the faith all the way to the finish line. We will see you later.